The NHL draft is only months away. And while all eyes appear to be on Austin Matthews, this past World Junior show there is plenty of high-end talent available. Right back, Pugliardi scores! Trying to top his dad and brother. Backhand by Nylander, he scores! They score, Nylander on the feed from Gardner. Nylander scores! What a shot! Alex Nylander and family are in studio to discuss his ranking and their family's future. It's Bob McKenzie's mid-season draft ranking special, next. Come on inside the studio. It is time for Bob McKenzie's mid-season draft ranking show. For that, we need Bob McKenzie. He's right here. TSN Director of Scouting, Craig Button, also standing by. This year, the NHL draft goes in Buffalo, New York, on June 24th. Last year, all eyes were on Connor McDavid. This year, Bob, what are you expecting? Well, the big story for me in this draft is not just who's number one, but the fact that there's a big three that have emerged. Three guys, an American center, and two big Finnish wingers who have separated themselves from the rest of the draft class. The other big story, the lack of Canadian born and bred talent high in this draft. In fact, the highest ranked Canadian born and bred prospect in this draft is number eight on our midseason list. It is time for Bob's number one pick, and it is Austin Matthews from Scottsdale, Arizona. Sean Matthews scores! What a set of hands. Austin Matthews looks, sees the opening, and it's in the back of the net. Back for a pass, he scores! Austin Matthews fires it home. Matthews makes no mistake. The puck's in the air, and then he taps it while it's in the air into the net. When the hands can do what the eyes see, it's an unbelievable skill set. If Matthews does indeed go number one, he'll be the first American to do so since Patrick Kane back in 2007. What's not to like? Absolutely. 10 out of 10 scouts surveyed have Austin Matthews number one on their list. And let's look at this realistically. This is a player that if he'd been bored 48 hours earlier, he would have been eligible for last year's draft. So everybody loves what he's doing in the Swiss League. The fact that he's got 24 goals in 31 games playing against men. The belief amongst many of the scouts who have him ranked as the number one prospect at midterm in this year's draft is that he does have a chance to be in the same stratosphere as Jack Eichel of the Buffalo Sabres. We've been watching this young man for a long time. TSN Director of Scouting Craig Button is standing by. Craig, he can score. He can do it many different ways, can he? Yeah, you're exactly right. He can do it many different ways. And when you think about a goal scorer, you just saw some clips of him really picking a spot and sniping. But great goal scorers do it in multiple ways. And that's what Austin Matthews does. He is so quick to recognize he's on the boards and then quickly finds his way into a scoring area. But when we look at this closer, he's got to get the puck settled. He's got to get it up and over the goaltender's pads. He's got very little net to work with. Here he is being surrounded by three players, and it looks like a nice finish. Let's go closer. You talk about threading the needle on the backhand. Unbelievable shot and the ability to put it here. Here he is now following in on the play, and he gets the shot off, but he never loses track of where the puck is, and he makes a nice redirect. Again, looking closely here as he turns and picks up the puck, He's got the defender's stick into his midsection, and he understands where the puck is coming, and the soft, soft hands allow him to redirect that puck. Make no mistake about it, this is the draft's best goal scorer. Craig, thank you. If you watched the World Junior Hockey Championship, you won Finland, they won that gold medal, and you saw two stars in the making. At number two, Patrick Laine. He's in the cross, there's Laine, the shot score! Got your line and it shoots Boy, he walked into that but he can really shoot the puck. When you're talking the elite level skill of Patrick Lyonne, sometimes there's nothing a goaltender can do. Seven goals, six assists at the World Junior Hockey Championship, and he looked like a man amongst team leaders at times. Bob, he was awesome. Yeah, for sure. And seven of the ten scouts we talked to had him at number two, so a very clear choice as the number two prospect behind Austin Matthews. And some scouts believe if anyone's going to challenge Matthews, it's going to be Line. He's big, he's strong, he's fast. He's a very flashy goal scorer, and he's expected to put up the kind of numbers you would expect from a number one winger in the National Hockey League. So that brings us to the number three pick, and no surprise, it was Lyonnais' teammate from the World Junior Hockey Championship, Jesse Pugliarvi. Pugliarvi scores! This is what still can 
do for you. In front of the net, score! Jesse Pugliardi. His hands are so good. Back to Pugliardi, scores! When you're a natural goal scorer, you don't need a lot of opening. He led the tournament with 17 points. He won a gold medal. And really, number two, number three, you have two fantastic options. Oh, no question about that. And Pugliarv, he's got the ability to score goals the same as Line, but maybe he's got a little bit more of a complete game, maybe a little more direct north-south in his game. But uh, he's still got the size and the speed and a shot that projects him to be a number one winger in the National Hockey League. They were so close. They were so fun to watch. The best line of the World Junior Hockey Championship, maybe the best we've ever seen. So why one over the other? Well, that's a good question, and a lot of scouts have a lot of different reasons. But the one thing that seemed to come up over and over again was that a lot of the scouts felt like Line a maybe is more of a pure goal scorer. That he's got a little more of a game-breaking ability than Pugliarvi. In other words, he's a little more flashy. Now, one scout had an interesting comparison. He talked about the difference between Temu Solane and Yari Curry. Now, he's not suggesting that Line A is Sol Solane and that Puglia Yarvi is Curry. What he's suggesting is that Solane and Curry both got mountains of goals in the National Hockey League, but they did it a different way. And therefore, these two generational talents we're seeing in Finland now are have the ability to be different in how they score their goals. It's a shame that we won't see these young men at the World Junior Hockey Championship next year because they will likely be playing in the NHL. And how special is this for the country of Finland? The highest projection ever of two Finnish players in the draft, Patrick Laine at number two in 2016, and Jesse Pugliari, number three. You see in 2002, it was Letnin and Piktinen. And back in 2013, you had Barkov and Ristolainen. Now joined by Patrick Line. Hey, Patrick, thank you for your time. Let's get your impressions of being ranked number two on Bob McKenzie's list. Mm, I think that it's a huge compliment for me and it kind of shows that I've been working hard ever since the summer and it's nice to, nice to hear those things and just now keep going and just work hard so the first place is still possible. It's been over a month since winning gold at the World Juniors. Which goal was more memorable, the game winner versus Canada or the game tying goal in the gold medal game versus Russia? Uh, I think both goals was pretty amazing and pretty special, but I think maybe the winning goal against Canada, that was quite amazing to score and that atmosphere at the ice and just the crowd was so amazing that I think that was pretty, pretty special goal. You and Jesse Pugliarvi are outstanding teammates on the national team but your rivals in the Finnish Elite League. How important is it to you to be ranked ahead of him on Bob's list? We kind of have that race between me and Jesse here, so it's nice to be ahead of him. If you were an NHL general manager and you were selecting first overall, who would be your number one choice? Uh, of course me. Give us your impressions <laughs> of number one ranked player Austin Matthews. You had a great rivalry at the World Juniors. Uh, he's a very good player for his age. He's a Big Sanderman, I think he's a pretty good at everything, but he's, I think he's going to be uh, in the next couple of years, uh, his team's maybe best player in the NHL. Fans got a great look at you at the World Juniors. Do you hope to play in the NHL next season? Mm, uh, yeah, I, I want to play in the NHL when the next season starts. If I have the same kind of summer as last year, I don't know why that couldn't be possible. So I want to be an NHL player next season and I'm going to do whatever I take that, that will come true. Patrick, thanks for your time. Good luck. Yeah, thank you.
Bob, we'll get you to your top 10 pick shortly. It's nice to see that Line A's consensus pick is Line A. That's always fun to see. Is there any chance that he could overtake Austin Matthews in Buffalo? Well, it's funny. The 10 scouts that I talked to, half of them said that Austin Matthews in their mind was pretty much a slam dunk. The other half, though, said they had to think really long and really hard as to whether Matthews could be challenged by a guy like Line A. Line A's the guy. If it's not Matthews at number one, Line A would be the guy that represents the best challenge. Now, as for the rest of our top ten, once you get by numbers one, two, and three, we start at number four. London Knights winger Matthew Tuchuk, the former, the son of former NHLer Keith Tuchuk, shares a lot of the same attributes as his dad. He's a gritty goal scorer. He can also make plays and does much of his best work down low in the dirty areas around the net. Number five, Sarnia Sting defenseman Jacob Chikrin. The son of former NHL defenseman Jeff Chikrin has dual citizenship, and he has chosen to play for Canada internationally. But the born and bred American from Boca Raton, Florida, very much under the microscope this season, didn't play particularly well in the CHL Prospects game, and his overall game this season has been a little inconsistent. He started this season as the clear choice as top defenseman and was number two overall in our preseason rankings in September. And while he remains the consensus number one blue liner, he's going to have that status challenged the rest of this season as the scouts continue to evaluate those blue liners. Number six, Mississauga steelhead winger Alexander Nylander, the younger brother of Toronto prospect William Nylander and the son of former NHLer Michael Nylander is a skilled and gifted playmaking offensive forward who makes everyone on the ice a lot better. Number seven, Ole Ulevi, the London Knight defenseman is a smooth skating and heady puck mover with some offensive upside who is lights out good at the World Junior Championship. Three out of ten scouts surveyed have him ranked ahead of Chikrin as the top blue liner in this draft class, and his game is most certainly trending up. Number eight, Cape Breton Screaming Eagle winger Pierre-Luc Dubois. At almost six foot three and 200 pounds, Dubois plays a relatively complete pro-style up and down game with ample amounts of skill and hockey sense. He's coming off a dominant performance at the CHL Prospects game and is our top ranked born and bred Canadian in this draft. Number nine, Mississauga Steelhead center Michael McLeod. The six foot three center is an above average skater who plays a relentless, hard driving two way game and oftentimes dominates games with his pursuit and possession of the puck. And finally, number 10, Valdor winger Julian Gauthier. At six foot four and 225 pounds, the nephew of former NHL defenseman Denny Gauthier Jr. is an elite skater who has all the physical tools to be a high end goal scorer and power winger in the NHL. So, Bob, that rounds up our top 10. Now, our TSN director of scouting, Craig Button, has some comparables for players that have played in the NHL. This is always cool to break down. You see, Two Americans there in the top four. Kachuk, in OHL scoring 77 points in 41 games. And look at the names, the comparables. Matthews, Brian Trotche, Laine, Vladimir Tarasenko, Holy Yarvi, you have Blake Wheeler, Kachuk, Gabriel Landeskog, Chikrin, Zach Bogosian. Some pretty interesting comparisons there. Meantime, Alex Nylander really put on a show at the World Junior Hockey Championship. Joe Pavelski, Ua Levy, TJ Brody, Pierre-Luc Dubois, Alex Steen, Michael McLeod, Dylan Larkin, and Julian Goche, James Neal. Ewell Levy, by the way, tied for the lead in the World Junior Defenseman scoring with nine points. Those were all assists. It's going to be a lot of fun in Buffalo at the draft. Alexander Nylander, highlight real material right there. His dad, Michael, went 59th overall in 1991. His brother, William, 8th overall in 2014. Alexander and the Nylanders join us in studio next to discuss the season and the possibilities ahead. And we round out the top 30 with a couple of defensemen who just may crack the top 10 by season's end. More to come right after this. Alexander Nylander, highlight real material right there. Nylander oh. scores! A shot. Look at the hands on Alexander Nylander. Alex Nylander. One thing that he does have is a really acute hockey sense. And how cool is this? We have all the Nylanders in the house, which is awesome. William, Alexander, and Michael, of course. Uh, Michael, assistant in Mississauga. Alex, you're playing there, and a future Maple Leaf in the middle as well. Alex, we'll start with you. 
You lead the rookie scoring race now by 15 points. Do you expect this kind of season with the Steelheads in your progress? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, been, uh, it's been a lot of fun playing the OHL. Uh, it's been a great city in Mississauga and Toronto. So uh, it's been a lot of fun playing there, and uh, I guess my, my season has gone well so far. So, Michael, our TSN director of scouting, Craig Button, gives this young guy right here perfect. Five out of five in smarts, skating, skills, competitiveness. What would you say the best part of his game is? I think his uh, vision, hockey IQ on the ice, is really, really good. William, in the AHL, you're doing really well. You came back from that concussion. You're 11 out of the AHL scoring lead. Can you win that AHL scoring title this year? Um, I mean, that's uh, always a goal, but I mean... That's something that uh, you have to wait and see. And I mean, my goal is to get called up to play for the Leafs some games this year too. So I mean, if I'm there for a little bit, I might uh, might be falling behind in that race. But I mean, that's always uh, always a goal if, if I'm playing in the HL. You guys have been awesome for Sweden. I think this is pretty special. Sweden, 36 consecutive group games at the World Junior Hockey Championship. I remember that goal. It was a one nothing win over the United States. Where does that rank in your young career? Uh, pretty high. Uh, one of the top, I would say. Uh, it was a great game. Uh, yeah, great pass. It was a great pass by Dima seeing me, and uh, it was just a real nice scoring that goal. Sweden was a pre-tournament favor coming in. Sadly, your brother got a concussion. Do you think possibly you would have had a good chance to win gold if he was healthy? Yeah, of course. I was playing the same line, so we had uh, great chemistry. So uh, we scored, I think, on our first shift. So of course, I think it would have helped uh, our team in the semifinal game. And uh, yeah, I think we would have. Probably one goal with my brother in the lineup. Same question, William. Would it have made a bit of difference to be uh, in there? I mean, of course, I'd like to believe myself that it could have been uh, a little difference playing in the playing in the tournament. But I mean, it's hard to say now. But I, looking back at it, I think I could have helped the team a lot. I mean, playing with my brother too, it was a, it was something that uh, I was really upset about when it happened. So nothing can do now. Now, Michael, you and William got to play pro hockey in Sweden together. Have the boys tried to convince you to come out of retirement to do the Gordie Howe thing? Is this going to happen, guys? Convince them here. I mean, we're trying to every day, but I mean, yeah, you just got to make sure that the Toronto Maple Leafs draft. Then we'll, then, <laughs> then, then we'll have to talk about it. Let's try out. <laughs> what was that like, Michael? What was it like, though, getting to play um, pro with your son? Pretty special, I assume. Yeah, it was very special and uh, very different. Normally, you, you go to practice and drop him off at the rink, and now you actually go there together and practice. and. You know, we had our battles uh, during some shifts out there, but uh, it was really, really fun to be able to do that. And uh, I had an opportunity actually to play with Alex too last season. So it's, it's also, uh, it was, uh, has been uh, quite amazing, I think. Very cool. Um, okay, so Alex, brother was picked by the Leafs, 2014, eighth overall, family bragging rights on the line with a draft coming up in Buffalo. Yeah, of course, uh, just trying to have a good season here and uh, See if I go higher or not. Uh, doesn't really matter. I just want to have a good season and get ready for the playoffs. Uh, William, are you hoping that your brother maybe gets picked by the Leafs? I mean, I, I'm hoping he goes to a team that uh, takes him and I mean believes in, uh, in what he does that can uh, help help that team wherever he goes. I mean, of course, he'd come to, if to Toronto. I'd be uh, I'd be really happy too. But I mean, for me, it's it's whatever whatever happens. I'm happy for him. Dad, final one for you. Two outstanding sons. How are they maybe different or similar on the ice? Uh, it's, it's hard to say. Of course, when they were younger, I think they were a lot different. As, as they grow older now, I think they become more and more uh, the same type of player. Uh, but I think they have uh, some different weapons in different areas of the game that they, they uh, have a little bit different. We look forward to you coming out of retirement. We want to thank you guys for <laughs> making some time. The Nylander family right here on TSN. Thanks, guys, and good luck Appreciate the rest that. of the way. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, gentlemen. In the meantime, we're going to continue with Bob McKenzie's list. Let's pick it up now at number 11. You have Jake Bean there, Mikhail Sergachev at number 12, Tyson Jost at number 13. Jost, an MVP at the World Junior A Hockey Challenge. He helped Canada win a gold medal there. He had nine points in four games. Charles McAvoy, a couple Americans in a row. Clayton Keller as well, Max Jones. And then you see Canadian player at number 17, Dante Fabro. Kiefer Bellows at number 18. His dad, Brian, was the number two pick back in 1982. Luke Cunning, and then Logan Brown. Brown, by the way, listed at six foot six and 222 pounds. It'll be interesting to see how Calgary Hitman defenseman Jake Bean. He's got 19 goals this year. Great offensive D-man. And Mikhail Sergachev from the Windsor Spitfires, a big guy that's calm, cool, and composed on the blue line. Can those guys break into the top 10? It's a possibility. 
and quite conceivable that they could also push Jacob Chikrin and Ole Ulevi as the top defensemen in this year's draft. Bob's list continues from 21 to 30. No goalies actually listed here in the top 30. We have Riley Tufty in the 21 slot, Logan Stanley, Jermaine Arupsov, Dylan Dubé, Erasmus Asplund, Pascal Leberge, Libor Hayek, Tage Thompson, Nathan Bastian, and Alex Debrinkat, who we did see at the World Juniors, but he did get hurt in that tournament. Boy, was Pascal Leberge ever good at the CHL Prospects game. Best player on the ice. He and Luke Pierre, Luke Dubois combined to be terrific in that CHL Prospects game. Leberge got the game-winning goal and was a big difference maker. He's not a big guy, but he has the ability to create things offensively. Still ahead, TSN Director of Scouting Craig Button is back and names his best in class from skating to shooting. Sean Matthews scores! And if the season ended today, we look at who might end up where in ranking versus current reality. It is time for Scouts Honor. Our TSN Director of Scouting, Craig Button, is back. I guess you could call these some button beauties as well. A lot of skill out there, Craig. What catches your eye? Well, we talk about Scouts Honor. This is best in class. We've seen the rankings, and certainly these are some top-end players that possess these skills. Skating, Jacob Chikrin is the best skater. Unbelievable ability to not only skate forward and backwards, but to pivot his quickness, his balance. He is the best skater in this draft class. Now you go to hands, Alex Nylander. His ability to handle the puck, not only in the open ice, but in traffic, to make those pinpoint passes, and also to never lose the angle of where he wants to go with his hands, exceptional. Smartest player, Austin Matthews. His ability to understand what play can be made at any moment in time, and then to make it, Second to none with respect to hockey IQ. Austin Matthews excels in that area. He also excels in the ability to shoot the puck. He can score in multiple ways, but he's got an exceptional shot. He sees a spot as small an opening as it could be, and he can hit it. And he can explode water bottles as we've seen. And when we talk about heart, the game of hockey needs heart. And Matthew Kachuk, at the heart of his game, is a deep desire to win, regardless of what the challenges are, regardless of what the obstacles are. And Matthew Kachuk excels, regardless of what is facing him. Craig Button, thank you very much. All right, so a recap now of Bob's top 10 consensus projections. If the draft lottery were held today, there is a look at your percentages. Edmonton Oilers, they're looking to get that top pick for the fifth time in seven years. Austin Matthews. What a player he is. Now, Bob, players are a lot like the stock market. They can rise and they can fall in value. From your preseason picks, from those rankings, who's maybe fallen the most? We'll start with Tyler Benson, the Vancouver Giant forward, was number 14 on our preseason, down to 34. That is largely injury-induced. you got Brandon defenseman Kale Clegg. He was ninth on the preseason, down to 39. And you've got Regina center Sam Steele. He was an honorable mention, top 15. He's down to 41. These guys have some support to go in the first round. It's a highly volatile draft from 23 through to 50 those are all interchangeable parts those three players I mentioned for a variety of reasons can be considered wild cards could easily be in the first round but their consensus is not there right now the draft in Buffalo on June 24th we can't wait Austin Matthews it should be exciting for him the top 60 are on tsn.ca they are elite talents there is a big three in town in 2016. We can't wait to see where the chips fall. On behalf of Bob McKenzie, myself, and our entire crew, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.